Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Prospect Central 101. My name is Chris, and today joining me we have... Keelan. And we're going to be watching some Zoring Elliott with you guys. He is a fourth year junior out of Missouri. Fourth year because he transferred from Texas and had to redshirt. Uh, listed at unofficially 6'3", 315 pounds. One month before me, that's kind of cool. Uh, so... Have you seen any Zorin Elliott tape yet? I have not. Any concerns about his measurables? No, measurables are good for a DT, I think. So there's a little bit of background. Uh, don't have any history info or character info, which is fine. Uh, but we'll definitely be looking further into that if he goes to the Lions in April. Uh, for those of you guys who are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, that's kind of the lines that I tend to use for most of these is my background watching Lions and Michigan uh, and just getting familiarity with them. So uh, that'll be something that I kind of look for over the course of this video, especially with how badly the Lions need a defensive tackle in this year's draft. I actually mocked him to us in the fourth round of my latest Lions mock draft at DLP. Uh, so that'll be the lines that I look through for most of this breakdown. Uh, Elliot, of course, a little bit of background. I am fairly familiar with him from how much PFF likes him. He is very, very highly thought of by Pro Football Focus. Uh, so hopefully we get to see some of that translate uh, into the games that we watch with us today as well. Uh, so. We're going to start by watching the South Carolina game. This was week four, or at least game four, uh, of his regular season. And he is number one along the defensive line for Missouri. Any other thoughts that you want to lay out before we start? Nope. Let's just get started, I think. A little bit slower off the snap. Nice spin counter. Okay, playing a lot of ones so far. Three this time. A little, is it just me or is he a little slow off the snap? Yeah, I got that. Watch this slow this down. Oh well, yeah, that reminds me if you get anything slowed down so I can do that for you too. Okay. But yeah, like he's already up, he's already engaged, he's already past the line of scrimmage, he's already way out of his, his stance in the first step. And he's not even completely out of his stance yet. So he's a little bit slow mm -hmm. off the snap. I think his hand placement does a great job of getting his hands inside shoulder pads. He got taken out there. Nice gap penetration. Does a really nice job of getting around the inside shoulder. Shooting through the gap. And yeah, like that play, I think, kind of simplifies that get off. This is really, really nice to get off by this guy next to him, so it's really exaggerated. Good like, grief. He's already engaged and. Elliot's not even out of the stance yet. Right. Now, again, that guy had, like, really, really good get-off, which is why it shows this you have to really show. Because uh, the ball's still not even in the quarterback's hands yet. 
So that was just a, a fantastic play by the guy next to him. But it does really get to show the difference between, say, Chase Young, who's in that same cat caliber, and uh, Elliot. Because, yes, yeah, see, at this point, plays already started to develop. Playing knows, which is interesting. Nice two gap look. Nice gap shoot. Nice spin counter. So he has a counter move, both mean run and pass rush. Okay, we got it. Interesting two four five look. Nice pocket push. Got held a little bit. Nice swim. Good move. So you really get to see on this play the block shed. Sticks himself up really nicely. And then just swims right over the top once he gets the outside leverage. Really nicely done. I like his activity level. His pretty mean shove of utilizing strength. They do seem to be playing him at one tag a lot, which is something I would like to see him in terms of versatility, maybe. Uh, push that a little bit more to three, and especially five, like he does here. Can you rewind that for a second? I just wanted to look at like that last play because you were saying earlier he had more deflections than sacks yes. and there's we got a hand on that one yeah this is a nice show of utilizing his strength Good hand use placement as well. What were you gonna say something? No, I wasn't. Oh, I really like his hand placement here. He does a great job of getting his hands inside. And really controlling point of attack. Okay, short yardage. Hurry up. I'm gonna start getting set quickly. Nice spin counter. I guess ability to go to second move. End of a nose here. Nice shed.
nice swim. So yeah, he definitely has some nice base sort of moves uh, with the spin counter, the swim. Bull Rush, of course, I mean, defensive tackles and Bull Rush. And there's that, just as I say that. <laughs> Eat them. Okay, nice double team. Nice, good two gap. I like the way that he's able to eliminate both the inside and outside here. He has leverage to his left if the ring back takes us inside. But as you'll see, the ring back takes the outside where the bigger hole is. And he's able to at least affect the play if he's not being held. So, really nice job, job there. Nice win move. Back to back, great plays. Boom, right over the top. That's excellent. It's tackling fundamentals, too. That's going to be a penalty in the NFL, but, you know. Nice swim move again. Easy. Easy sack. But what I like about this play again, and I, I keep talking about this every time we do defensive line videos, is how he gets the sack, right? It's very similar to like you, we see from Derek Brown, Fletcher Cox, all your elite DTs. Is you really get to see the technical elements more so than the, button, the athleticism and all, and all that stuff that you get to see with your edge guys. He does a great job of creating that separation to maximize the distance between him and the offensive guard. Yeah, the guard. Boom, it's a little bit of separation at this point in the play. And then he resets and then attacks downhill with the swim. That's a fantastic setup. Nice power rush. Okay. Again, I just see a little bit of bending dip. A slow back push for a short pass. Oh man, that was a great drive. You really get to see him utilize the functional strength on this play. You're going to be this line right here. And he's going to take on this left guard and just drive him all the way back into the quarterback. That's a really nice pocket collapse. Instead of joining the double team and getting it, beating it. Nice swim move. Yeah, he just destroyed the old lineman. Got two nose. More of a two gap block in this potential situation here. Should be interesting. Especially for a fourth and roll. Oh, nope. Here we so. So, your thoughts on Jimmy Elliott here? It was very nice. I really like his his pass rush potential as well. As, he's pretty good against the run. I like his technique. His his first step is something I'm gonna have to look at closer in his next game or two. To see if that really improved, because that was so far his biggest issue, in my opinion. Anything else? Um, 
Not yet, no. Playing him inside, inside a lot, which is interesting. For someone with his kind of pass rushing upside, I'd almost like to see him a little bit more at three or five, personally. But the way they're using him, they're using him as like a zero to one, almost like the Lions use like a Snacks Harrison. Which is really confusing. Just in number three. And again, you get to see that work out with the next pocket collapse. Good motor pursuit, too. I'd like to see him not turn his back there and hold that gap a little bit better. That was much better. The two gap situation. Nice initial first punch. He has a really, really nice job. This is something I didn't really talk a lot about. Uh, I don't think. I don't remember talking a lot about with Derek Brown. Is he does a great job of creating the separation in this space to set himself up for the nice pass rush variation afterwards. And this is one of the areas I really, want, really want to see Chase Young improve in. Uh, is, man, you're really going to get to see him back off a little bit to create that separation in that space. So that your shorter arm into your linemen, especially your guards, uh, aren't able to recover for that second second effort rush. And I'll actually slow this down a little bit more so I can showcase this. I talked about this a couple times already, but this is a really nice example where you can showcase this. Watch you get that nice initial uh, quick first punch. And then you see him create that space so that he's able to swim right over the top. And now he has a straight free rush. If the quarterback isn't throwing this ball in a quick route, uh, there's like an almost a near sack. So you really, really get to see him doing a nice job of creating that space, creating that separation uh, from the linemen who have those shorter, shorter wingspans, the shorter arm lengths. Uh, and it allows him to get that second effort rush. On a consistent basis, too. Nice gap shooting. I really do wish they would play him at three a little bit more. I up the number. Same thing. I just talked about this. Watch how he's able to see he's he's washing down here in case this is an inside run play. But then, bam! At this point in the play, he utilizes that arm to create that separation, move that line out of the way, and now he has a straight free rush right next to the linebacker. He is so efficient uh, in that particular area, and I'm normally not big on defensive linemen who only have one or two variations of rush. But it goes doubly so for Chase Young. But what he's able to do is play his second rush, his second effort rush, 
off of that initial first move. So if you go to that same initial first move and it keeps working, it keeps working, it keeps working, and then you vary that second move, that still gives you enough of a variance to where you can say, okay, now I can go with the spin, now I can go with the swim, now I can go with the counter, now I can go the inside out, now I can go this way, that way, whatever, or the up and under, the bend, the rip, the dip, all those types of things. He's able to set up that second move so well with that first one. Uh, that it doesn't really hurt him in terms of that pass rush variance because he's he's able to utilize that second move variance uh, so consistently based off that first move. Here we go. This should be nice. Getting to see him a little bit further outside. And he's just walking right in. That's disappointing. If they were to able, if they were able to just get him in that three slot again, another three left grab, this should be good. Or the top, or the top. Okay, he ate the double. That's good enough for me. Another outside wrap. Here we go. Getting to see this a little bit more as the game progresses. There you go. Okay, would like to see him be a little bit more patient with getting around the end. Instead of washing around the end here, if he would have transitioned this from speed to power and gone bull, it probably would have worked a little bit better because at this point in the play, he lost the gap and now he just has an easy rush lane for a TD. Uh, but I like the idea. I like the idea of getting him into that space and letting him transition this blocking that offensive tackle because when you get him on the offensive tackle on that wide, on that wide rush, if he were able to just reset this and then drive, you have easy power leverage uh, against that tackle. Now when you're short yardage, you want to get him back a little bit closer in. You're actually still a little bit further out though, still at mid three. So I wonder if he's going to try and shoot through that one gap. Nope, they actually end the late rush. Okay, yep, now you're gonna want to see him go over the top. Ooh, that whole line got destroyed. Okay, back inside at one. Okay, next one gap shoot. Oh, he was on the end. Okay, so he's actually this defender. That's cool to see. So this time they do have him at five. Um, you get to see him work that inside run defense. That was really nice. Back in nose. I guess for me what it comes down to is you're seeing him in all different, because Missouri's really utilizing all these really weird alignments and formations and, and very unique variations of, of scheme on the clock. But I guess for me, I like him a little bit more in that 3 or 5 role because you get to see more of him uh, in that 1-gap situation. And I know he can 2-gap, but we've seen him 2-gap as well as playing nose. But man, it's, in terms of that pass rush, you're really going to maximize the pass rush upside if you get him at 3-tech. Uh, like a DeForest Buckner. That's the kind of guy I'm thinking of here. Keelan, you still here? Guess not. Oh, that was a nice swim. Man, just really nice shot. And what I like about this play too is you get to see him over the center. And then, bam, he actually has two gap on this play. Because he has to defend both the A's. And he has a really nice shot with showing you that right side A gap.
I like the activity level here. He has a really nice shot of fighting through this. And you're going to get to see him wind up a little bit wide. But you really get to see his activity level in his fight. Again, really nice gap penetration. And also, again, here having been two gap. That was a six spin move. Oh, just really good. Oh, man. And I love the way he sticks this up, too, right? You get, you see that inside hand placement? And then, bam, he just throws the outside leverage and then comes back inside gets a free rush. Staying the world a little bit more, I'm turning that back. Make that pocket collapse. Okay, and start to get that double team. Again, great pocket collapse. Okay, so yeah, when faced with double team, he does lose his anchor a little bit. Uh, something that you really want to work on. Okay, nice start move. This guy here. I like his uh, vision. Things like that, rushing faster. Doing a pretty nice job of, of recognizing those brush lanes. Two gap here, I think. Two gap. Okay, I like the idea again. I can move that space out wide. Next one gap shoot. Side. Nice spin. 
and then the counter. Excellent. So didn't end up working out, but I really, really love what he does on this play. Bam. You get to see that nice inside, inside spin move to set himself up for the inside rush. But then when the offensive guard comes back inside and he sees this pressure sling open up, he counters that with the over the top to try and get back outside. That's really, really nicely done on his part. I should attempt to split the double team. And I would like to see him not lose that anchor. It's probably my biggest issue with him so far in this particular game. I keep my mind though. Nice shed. Yeah, he's doing, other than the anchor thing, he's doing a pretty nice job in this in run defense so far. Oh, I like that. That was really nice. He does a great job here of, of working on the outside stun. And then he ends up just shooting through to generate that pressure. Scap shoot. Nice control of that gap. Again, they have him taking out both of these inside and out. He shoots that inside leverage. Really nicely done. Cut, cut block. I hate those. Inside, okay. Started to. I like the idea here, though. They're getting him out wide in the five tech rule. And they're trying to get him matched up with the offensive tackle to get that pocket push, and they do. Yep, again. He does this nice job of setting himself up for the free rush. And then on that second half of a rush, he's able, he's able to create that separation in the first half to create that second half easy rush lane.
That's just, honestly, part of that is his field vision as well. You really get to see having a two-gap roll, this is a run play. Uh, but what you really get to see here is he's keeping his eyes in the backfield, and he just sees this rush lane opening up around the end, and he just co collapses down in the pocket from around the end. That's a really nice shot of reading the field. Okay, a little bit better. Still got moved back a little bit, but I was able to recover and uh, end up dinging on that stop. Yes, pocket collapse. Nice swim. Yeah, again, gets pushed back a little bit. So you really just want to see that anchor. I like his control here. It was a really nice shot of, of getting that control in case he needs to learn this inside, which he kind of ends up doing. Uh, but he also has control enough to win outside as well. Again, two gap type of versatility being shown there. So, while well, I try and call Keelan back and get all that stuff uh, set up again, unfortunately, we had a disconnection issue. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I saw from that game, uh, in that game I should say, from Elliot. Uh, so, I really want to see him improve that anchor uh, a little bit more. Uh, something that you know, I talked about throughout the, the course of that particular game uh, was really just him getting moved back in that run defense. Uh, and uh, that's probably the biggest place of improvement I would say for him. Uh, is that run defense. Uh, so, keep on uh, working on that anchor and making sure he's able to maintain uh, his spot on that line. Not necessarily, he doesn't necessarily have to get uphill push, uh, but I'd like to see him uh, maintain his hold on line scrimmage without being moved further back in. Uh, another thing, though, I will say I like this pass rushing. His pass rush moves were fantastic. Uh, he definitely has the requisite athleticism to be able to shoot those gaps. Uh, he did a fantastic job of... Apologies to everyone about the uh, unfortunate technical difficulties, but we got him back. Uh, so I just finished watching the Tennessee game, and I was talking about how I want to see him work on his anchor. Uh, he got moved back a little bit too much for my personal liking, uh, but I really did like his variation. Of, I was starting to talk about how I really liked his variation of pass rush moves, how I was able to win with the swim, the spin, uh, the bowl. Uh, the variations and how he's able to utilize different variations against different uh, offensive linemen, as well as his athletic ability. Uh, he's working with his 
uh, ability to shoot the gaps, his quickness, and, and things like that once he's able to get out of the stance. So, I don't know right. before you ended up getting, but is there anything from that game that you saw that you wanted to add to that? Honestly, I didn't get to watch the rest of it. My dog got out, so I had to figure that out. Ooh. But we're good. So... Is there anything from the th first part of the game that you did see that you wanted to talk about that I didn't mention? Um... There was when I was watching it, and now I completely forgot what it was. Um... I, I like his pass rush moves. I like he seems really strong, which is good for a defensive lineman. He seems versatile versatile in the way that he can play different gaps effectively, which is quite effective. Right. Also, I don't know if you, uh, if I'm supposed to, but I can't see the screen, so. Oh, yep, I forgot to fix that when you had to call you back. My fault of not answering. I was figuring out the dog situation, like I said. You good? Yeah, I can see. Okay. All right. Oh, he was getting very excited about the play. That's frosty. Zero. Or actually, that's more like one. No, it's a zero. Playing a little more wide. I like his gap control on that play. Able to wait inside or out. Shed. Nice, that should have been a sack on him. Just can show the pads. The hand placement. Yeah, that was very, very close to a sack. Same thing, doing a really nice job of controlling those inside pads. For me, I thought they said 104 average. I was like, oh my goodness.
Ooh, short yardage. That was a nice burst on Elliot's part. He has a really nice job here going off the snap. Yeah, he exploded off on that play. And yeah, at this point in the play, he's the only one engaged. He just stacks a little bit too low, so they're able to take him to the ground. Suddenly he was short. Yep. Again, free rush, and that was almost a stack, too. He does really, really well with finding and exploiting those pass rush lanes. That's a nice tackle. Oh. What the heck? I like the black and yellow. You're talking about the... Oh, that was nice. And that, again, this is what I was just talking about in the last game was Anchor. I wanted to see him improve and holding the line was a really nice shove of that there and shuffling through the traffic uh, to bring down that back for TFL. Yeah, we were talking about the Nord Ryan uniforms. Mm. I like this one's better. Yeah. I really like the yellow and black. Yep. Ah, okay. I want to see him control that a little bit more. I like the idea, I like the assignment, they have him in two gap. I him to control this inside out. But he's not able to get back outside. Might have been held, which is part of the reason, but... Back in three. I'd like to see him shoot the B. Which he did. Perfect. Same thing, nicely done. Nice gap shooting. So it's not Derek Brown as a tackler, but that's fine. That's something they can improve on, especially for someone his size. Line up at one. Shoots through the beat. <coughs> and yeah, you just want to see him put himself in a little bit better position. <laughs> nice second move. I like the way that he starts this out with this over the top swim move. And then he uses that to get the uh, guard inside and then counter that with the outside spin. That's really, really nice start up and plan. Tracking. Okay. 
Oof. So, overall, your thoughts to the three games of Jordan Elliott. Or in your case, two plus, whatever. Two and a quarter. You know, it's actually... It's nice. It's um, pleasantly surprised. It's... I feel like he was just really solid. There wasn't really, like, anything he was... Awful at... By any means, he was just really solid at everything. Also, I love your comment under Derek Brown. Not perfect. Pretty much. I am a huge, huge fan of his. He's probably one of my favorite players I've ever watched. I've been watching tape somewhat officially since 09 and like very casually since like 05. Really? Yeah, and he's probably one of my favorite players I've ever seen. Wow. Yeah, I love is, Brown. She is so, so, so good. That's why I want the Lions to take him. I would not be mad if we took him at three. Like, he is just in that elite of the elite group. I mean, you, can, you can tell about him great, too. I have 90 on him. Yeah. But, yeah, he is. Like, he is basically... I, I made this comparison in one of my Lions checks, too. He is what Quentin Nelson was to guards. He is to defensive tackle. Wow. Like, just like that. I love Can't that miss now. elite blue chip, gotta have him type of player. Because he does everything so, so, so well. Oh, yeah. Plus, you got the character and all the extra stuff with it. No real injury history that I remember. Like, yeah, he is up there. In, like, every single area, too. Yeah, I love him. He's great. I remember we watched him together. And, you know, he was, he was a terrific watch. Okay, so I got to watch the... I got to see was one. What were the other two? Uh, uh, South Carolina was one, and... Old mess with the other. Okay, so uh, here we go. It's Jordan Elliott from Missouri. So here are our defensive tackle uh, categories. Again, for those of you guys who are new to the channel, welcome. We have Tiger Gazing 8. And I talked about this in the Tennessee game. I don't know if he would already gone off or not yet, Keelan. But I really don't, I'm really not a fan of the way he turns his back too often. Uh, and let himself get moved out of his gap a bit too frequently. So, that was probably one of my bigger problem areas with him. Followed by anchor, which I'm just going to skip to now. Uh, could use a little bit more consistency with the anchor as well. Block shutting was solid. Uh, definitely liked his ability to get around blocks. Pocket collapsing was also really, really good. Uh, tackling, would like to see a little bit of improvement, but overall, I think he was pretty solid when he was able to get his hands on guys, so I'm not going to mark him down too much for that. Uh, hand usage was really, really good. I definitely felt comfortable with a 9 there as well. Athleticism, I don't know if I want to necessarily go 10, but I probably should, so I'm going to go with a 10 uh, for athletic ability. And we really got to see that with his gap shooting, his gap penetration skills. Uh, his motor in pursuit and things like that, which will also give him a 10 here. Uh, definitely a fan of what he was able to do in that area. Uh, as far as keeping plays going, going to his second move, going to his, his uh, finding those lanes and continuing from pass rush beyond the, the line of scrimmage. Move set also, again, a perfect time. Extremely, extremely good move set. Uh, and then no character injury issues or anything, so I'm going to go with the 10 there as well. So, I'll let you go over your grades and categories and your thoughts while I calculate. Okay. Well, just looking at yours, um, I don't really see anything I disagree with. I, I think yours is pretty spot on. I'm just going to go through mine. Hold on. 
So for me, he totals a 90. Interesting. Which is a lot higher than I thought, but it's about where I've seen him uh, analytically, too. So I don't exactly buy that. That's basically borderline first round grade for me. Cool. I'll keep mine here so you can see. I'm just calculating mine. Hold on. Go for it. While you're doing that, I will talk a little bit about Elliot, and I do have him behind Gallimore. Uh, I think Gallimore was a little bit more pro ready. We got to see that, of course, uh, with the anchor, uh, with the tackling, and uh, a little bit more pocket collapse as well, but everything else is pretty much the same. So... I think he does compare really, really similarly to Gallimore, but with Gallimore, you just get a little bit more of that consistency, especially with the uh, the, the tackling and the anchor ability. And this is Siobhan Kinlaw. Kinlaw, again, very similar in terms of mold, uh, but you're getting a little bit more of the tackling. Uh, it's just a little bit more refined than Elliot is, but very similar. Uh, I just think Gallimore and, and Kinlaw are a little bit better. Fair. I have him at a 92. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. Which is behind Brown and Kinlaw. Have you gotten to Gallimore yet? I have not. Okay. So, yeah, that's probably where I'll end up, too. I don't know where I'm going to have Rayquan and Lawrence and Fortu and Black and Dubuque and Stubridge, but... So what do you, what do you remember? What you're higher on or lower on than I am? Um, let's see. I'm just I'm just trying to go back and forth and see. I feel like I'm slightly lower on. Move set than you are just ever so slightly because from what I saw they were effective but in the same way some of them were kind of limited I want to say okay interesting yeah for me what it is is like when I think about move set I really want to see kind of just like a base so like can you use a swim move can you use a swim move can you use a bull rush Fair. Can you chain moves, and do you have counters? Those are really the five types of things that I go for. And then, of course, if you have other things, then they can replace. So, like, if you have, like, a rip and dip, or you have, like, a club, then, like, if you don't have a swim or a spin, it's really just, like, three moves. So, like, mm -hmm. if you have three moves, uh, a counter move, and can you chain? Okay. Anything else you want to add on Elliot? Um, I don't think so. He he was pretty solid. I like him. Yeah, so do I. I definitely see where PFF is coming from. Uh, having watched this tape now and, and can give you guys full thoughts. Uh, I actually do tend to agree with them uh, on this particular uh, player. So mm -hmm. with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Learned a thing or two along the way as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this uh, as we move forward. Oh, I did want to ask you one more thing uh, before we wrap this one up. I watched him to the Lions in the, I think, fourth round on the CDN simulator. 131. So is that fourth or fifth? I can't remember. But uh, do you think that he has a good fit in Detroit knowing that we need defensive tackles? Um... Does hand play three tech or five tech? 
both. More so okay. five to me. I feel like he fits more of like a three tech role in Detroit. So we obviously have like the the whole that like knows where Snacks was, but I feel like he fits a good role at three tech, and I think he would fit nicely in Detroit. I honestly think he'd kind of be really nice replacing Aishon, too. Because Aishon was the guy who kind of played, like, that 1-3 to three role. Yeah. Uh, so, like, you have your guy who plays your 0-1, to one, which is your Snacks. Your 1-3, to three, which is your Aishon. Your 3-5, to five, which is your Hand. Your 5-7, to seven, which is Strand. And then your 79, Edge. Uh, so, plus your versatile guys are guys who can go from 0-5. to five, And your guy who can go from 5-9. to nine. Uh, So... I really like him in that zero or in that one to three role that Ishan's going to be vacating. Uh, yeah, and and can be a little more of a power guy too. So, but yeah, I think that he has the upside to be able to potentially two gap. We got to see him control some gaps, uh, and you know, my main thing with him is I just want to see him kind of play leverage a little bit more in terms of head on uh, and attacking blocks rather than washing down the line and and turning his back a little bit too early and easily for me. So that would probably be my one biggest area I'd like to see him improve on here. But yeah, I mean, if he falls like the third round, mm-hmm. definitely a fan of him in that particular spot. Yeah, so, I, I agree. For now, I uh, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and peace out.